Okay, so we now talk about the second aspect of experimental design, that once you have settled on your overall conceptual idea of your experiment in terms of cognitive sub subtraction or factorial design, the question that always comes up is, um, okay, I have now this task and this task has multiple trials and so on, so how should I organize this in time um, with the aim of, yeah, I guess, getting good data? I guess that's the question. And historically, um, there are two kinds of designs that have been used in FMI research, block designs and event-related designs. And um, these days, yeah, mixed designs are being used. Um, the thing is that block designs are, I think, only being used in vision research these days. Otherwise, everybody's doing event-related designs. So block designs is a little bit old school. Um, but these are terms that uh, you just uh, need to be familiar with to be able to talk to fMRI people. And let's go over them. So there it's fairly straightforward, the whole thing. So block designs, um, of course, they um, it's already in the name. So you will have um, blocks, uh, temporal blocks in time where something is happening. And the reason why block designs uh, were popular uh, in the early days of fMRI in the um, early and mid 90s um, is that Cognitive PET research always had to be done in a block manner. So um, remember the PET was done um, by injecting some, for example, radioactive labeled glucose um, that was then primarily taken up in brain areas with high metabolism. And um, to do cognitive um, research in this domain, because this process of um, basically the glucose, the radioactive uh, labeled uh, glucose um, going into your brain and in, into certain areas took quite some time. Um, people had to do one task for let's say a minute and then um, there would be um, another injection and um, another task. So this whole process um, of PET research required these relatively long blocks and because fMRI was then um, yeah, used in lieu of um, PET, it made sense to have these kind of blocks in the beginning. The basic thing is that each experiment condition is presented continuously for an extended time period um, and then different blocks of conditions are usually alternated. So the extended time periods that we're talking about here in terms of fMRI are like 16 to 20, 25 seconds or so. Um, I think my very early fMRI paper, definitely this glass pattern paper, that also used the block design um, with 16 seconds, I think. Um, Event-related designs, they are um, inspired by event-related potential EG research, which of course also was there already in the early 90s. And in EG research, um, you present a stimulus and then um, you record a response and you look at this response uh, in the EG in peristimulus time of about, um, yeah, let's say, minus 500 milliseconds to plus one second or so. And then you can do the next trial. And there, of course, you, um, trials were always uh, interspersed. I think that's the term. Um, so you um, didn't have to continue doing one cognitive task over an extended amount of time. So the different conditions are not uh, grouped into temporal blocks. Um, and the events, um, event-related uh, designs in fMRI in particular use variable um, um, short intervals between successive events and the timing here is more um, if a trial from, for example, showing a visual stimulus to a response takes around, I don't know, two to three seconds, so stimulus goes on, you're, uh, you're supposed to click a button, for example, decide is a face or house, that takes like two to three seconds maximal, and of course you can also do that faster, and then the inter trial interval would be um, four to six seconds, uh, usually. So that's kind of the event-related design, because last time we saw that 
the non-linearity effects um, kick in um, if you go to shorter interval intervals, like uh, more than four <laughs> seconds. Mixed designs, um, clear a combination of block and event-related designs. So there are some um, block kind of aspects in it where you have some long-term sustained activation. And in this, uh, you have uh, different um, events. Typical mixed designs are always that, um, for example, you do a task um, based, for example, on a certain stimulus feature. So you have to decide left or right or red or blue. And um, you do this based on the same stimuli, but during some time you have to attend to their motion. And uh, during other times you have to attend to their color. So you, um, and you, always have uh, you always have a colorful stimulus that moves. Um, so you um, yeah, dissociate the um, attention to one of these stimulus features to um, the decision about them. So that's just one example for mixed design. So this was kind of the um, slide to memorize things from. Um, if you look into the Hütte and if you look into the question of fMRI power, Spe uh, maybe let's say up to 2010 or so, um, fMRI power was a lot uh, concerned with a first level uh, fMRI analysis, so the analysis of um, single participant effects. And um, there is specifically the question of how to arrange um, um, trials in time. And if you read the Hütte and also this literature on how to do experimental design and fMRI, you will come across this detection versus estimation power issue. Um, I have it here on a slide um, in an informal uh, and intuitive uh, uh, sense. So this is what this first dot here means, informal intuitive use of these terms in the current context. So please understand them as terms that are in some way that we don't discuss related to the technical terms of statistical power, statistical estimation, and statistical detection is more um, single detection theory term rather than statistics terms. But yeah, please don't think too much about uh, these terms right now because what the Hüttel explains and what I now explain is far removed from actually the technical use. In this sense, detection means um, to figure out whether it's a little bit in the, in the sense that you used it um, um, before. So detecting whether a given voxel changes in response to an experimental manipulation. So just is there a difference or is there no difference, but not trying to describe the difference. Estimation in the current sense and in this work on fMRI power on the first level, essentially that's the work by Thomas Liu, um, refers to the question of uh, how uh, does um, the uh, voxel time course um, change in response to an experimental manipulation. These are not the terms that are usually used for estimation and detection, it's just used here. And for these things, um, the basic intuition is that block designs are good for detection and event-related designs with long intertrial stimulus intervals are good for estimation. This is not too surprising because we've seen that uh, last week, so let's briefly show you the um, picture on what these kind of things are based. So what we have seen last week or maybe even the week before was, no, that's kind of it. It's kind of it, but we had a very clear picture of that some time ago then, but not even last week. I think it was uh, when we talked about the board signal there. Um, so this issue with detection versus estimation is that the idea is that if you have this persistent stimulation in a block design, then um, you rise to a plateau, everything is saturated, and if there's a difference between your conditions in a block design, um, you have quite a number of data points that are here on this plateau, and you have um, good uh, uh, can have good hope that if there's a difference between them, you will identify that. What you don't identify in this way is what they call in this detection versus estimation um, is the uh, 
um, precise form of the hemodynamic response because um, this saturates and you cannot uh, estimate this here. If you want to estimate this um, uh, temporal time course of the hemodynamic response, this is better done for an, uh, an event-related design. This is the story about detection and estimation power on the first level in fMRI. Just that you know when you read this in the huddle, this is what this is referring to. This is not the whole story about what is estimation in terms of uh, fMRI data analysis and so on. It's just a specific part, but it comes up in uh, this context. And it also relates to the question of how should you analyze, uh, how should you design your um, stimulus order um, when you prepare an experiment, and you will find that there, of course, are by now toolboxes that help you to do that and then you need to kind of say what is the um, loss function here so what do I want to optimize and if you want to optimize um, detection in the sense that you find differences um, in the conditions at all then you might want to use a block design if you're interested in figuring out the time course of the hemodynamic response then you might not want to use a block design this is the basic uh, uh, message here the thing is really to under, uh, discuss statistical power that would of course require a formal statistical setting we will do a little bit uh, on that in january when we discuss actually when we discuss um, uh, um, one criterion for a formal criterion for first level design, so for, for creating design matrices um, um, for analyzing SMI data. Um, yeah, and in a way, we have prepared this now with this slide. It's one of these slides where I think yeah, how it's written in the book that doesn't explain anything, but I cannot also not, not talk about it at all because it sometimes comes up. This is <laughs> No? Okay, good. Um, good, so the remainder then uh, would be to um, look at um, some examples. So this is a beautiful example of a block design uh, where the idea is that um, people read words aloud. So they read carrot, mailbox, knife, tiger, sweater, and so on for some reason. And sometimes they listen to music at the same time and sometimes they don't, as shown here. It's a beautiful picture from the little book. Um, and more conceptually, um, this would be that in a block design, you have task A, so music and reading, and task B, only reading, and then again task A, task B, uh -huh, and maybe you even have a rest in that. Just shows how block design looks. It's a little bit useless, this slide. Um, but these, uh, the important thing is that during a block, there are many events. Yeah? So you read these things. And here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's say you take about um, 1 to 2 seconds. Then a block is kind of uh, yeah, 16, 20 seconds. And then you do something else. That's why it's called block design. Uh, this is another block design with a little bit shorter uh, blocks but again with multiple events in there. So here um, the task is um, that you have these stimuli. Let's zoom in. Um, and you have to decide um, whether um, no, which of these two lower stimuli is identical to the upper stimulus. Yeah? So for example, this and this is the same. So this would be the right one. And in this case, this and this is the same. And of course, these are emotional stimuli, which sometimes I think I'm autistic when I look at them because I don't know. And some, some of them look like for me as if there's some emotion, but somehow just look as if they are grimacing, like, but not as if somebody is like really angry, at least to me, but then maybe I'm autistic. Um, so that's one uh, sort of blocks where people uh, have to the, match the faces, and then there are other uh, blocks where they have to match the form, so they have to decide is this form identical to this or is this form identical to this. And then if you do the contrast between blocks, this is how the story of this uh, paper that is discussed in the middle goes, then you find the emotion area. Because um, for this you need an emotional judgment, and for this, you don't need an emotional judgment. This is actually how it's discussed in the huddle, but uh, I, I mean, 
if you think in terms of cognitive processes and cognitive subtraction, of course, there are millions of confounds. So what of other things are different between this and this? Face recognition, face recognition maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, also that, uh, yeah, there's definitely, I mean, the stimuli are completely different in the, any, uh, anyway. So, um, Nevertheless, so that that also is in a way good because if this experiment is out and this shows that the amygdala is active for that, um, in a way this is also what we are currently doing with our, in a way, somewhat badly designed uh, bandits under pure exploration and bandits under um, exploration exploitation. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. So if um, people want to do, if people are the first people who ever do emotion experiment, uh, emotion experiment. It's not necessarily completely easy to come up with the best control experiment in the very beginning because you're not uh, that much into the literature and the whole thing. And the other thing is that um, you might also actually not necessarily want to control completely for everything because, of course, controlling for many things um, also minis minimizes your chances of observing anything in the, the beginning because if things, if your conditions are really, really similar, uh, then why should there be a difference? So, um, in a way, to do such an experiment, if you're starting out a research program on emotion and the brain, that's a good idea because then you can already, for example, replace these by neutral faces and so on and can generate many experiments and using this cognitive subtraction approach, fiddle things out more. Um, if you would do something like this right now, uh, people would ask you whether you have read anything and uh, whether you're crazy, essentially. Um, okay, so that was, were two examples for block designs, one with a little bit longer blocks and here with four seconds blocks, which are quite slow, slow, uh, short blocks. This shows um, in block design essentially how the uh, voxel time courses look. So um, we've seen things like this before. So um, here you have multiple measurements um, during one block. Um, so depending on the TR, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's say if it's a TR of two, this is roughly 16, maybe 20 seconds. And of course, the question is uh, how much variability you have in here versus uh, the variability between your task B and your task A. This is just a visualization of what a statistical analysis, of course, uh, does. But this is kind of also, if you look at the raw data from uh, block designs, this is how the data actually looks. Um, yeah, block designs. Um, Event-related designs. Thing is, um, what you need to assume in event-related designs is that the cognitive processes that you're interested in can actually be evoked on this time scale. But I think nobody actually has problems with that. Um, so, uh, of course, people believe if you tell people to attend on a given trial that takes, I don't know, four or five seconds um, to attend to a specific feature of the stimulus or to a specific point in, t uh, uh, point in space or to just perceive a face or a wrench or a, a, a coffee thing from from the Middle Ages, um, then um, I think everybody believes that this is possible. So I don't think that people think that people, I mean, there is something like cognitive mindsets and it's get you a little bit more fluent if you keep on going uh, with something for a little bit. But in general, I think it's not a big uh, constraint so that people uh, don't think that you can, if you do a, have to do a working memory trial and on the next trial, uh, you have, don't have to do a working memory trial and then again a working memory trial. I think uh, people in general believe that uh, humans can do that. So it's not a big fun uh, assumption, but it's an assumption um, that you can always get into the specific state. Finally, uh, mixed designs <laughs> to uh, uh, yeah, basically get done with this. So um, I think mixed designs, um, especially if you uh, have this kind of more cognitive, uh, fine-grained or um, more cognitive in a way uh, um, processes that you're interested in. So um, talking about uh, attention, um, memory. Hmm? memory maybe, um, and um, other things. 
uh, the, so the basic example is always attention, so that you have uh, uh, attention to this in some blocks, attention to this in other blocks, and within the blocks you do something. Um, then um, you can have these mixed designs where within a block um, you do item related, uh, you use item related processes. So there is some a stimulus coming up, you do something with it, you think about it, but at the same time you have a, a cognitive context activated. Um, which yeah, this can also be different. So another example would be that um, that's actually also a good example when you say memory uh, that you learned about certain certain items beforehand before the experiment, um, and then during the experiment you have to uh, do decisions, uh, let's say on faces that you've never seen before. Um, or faces that you have seen uh, before, for example, because you memorize them or because they are famous faces and so on. And then you could do a block of famous faces or familiar faces, let's say, that you learned about, where um, you already have learned certain uh, distinguishing features and it's maybe easier or whatever, but you need to activate your memory. And then in another block, um, you have um, faces that you are new to you, you haven't learned the distinguishing features and you have to again discriminate between faces. So that would be another thing where you have a, a block related to cognitive context and item related processes. However, people in general also do these kind of experiments, not necessarily in block designs, but sometimes uh, you may have the hope that um, with a block design, so relating attention to this versus attention to that, or processing of familiar versus non-familiar, uh, gives you better result. In general, I would say that um, everybody or most people, uh, especially yeah, like, uh, like us, uh, when we do experiments here at CCMB, everybody uses event-related designs for, uh, for everything. So I think this, um, you still see people doing block designs and maybe mixed designs, but I don't think vision people are that interested uh, um, in more current factors. So you see block designs in the vision research that is being done, um, particularly if people then want to classify and average the pattern somehow uh, over a whole block. In general, everybody is using event-related designs. And personally, I also think that event-related designs are nicer. They are a little bit more close to what um, the, to things that feel natural. Um, because you often have to change something. And then I think in the future, um, I think this uh, section of the course and also this slide needs a little bit more um, in terms of continuous designs because what also becomes slowly popular is showing people movies um, or um, and using this as a visual stimulus, so going to more natural stimuli. Um, and what we are currently working on or started working on is um, using oh, yeah, what we are trying to do, uh, and Lena is uh, helping a little bit with that, uh, is to use um, computer games um, rather than the, so you have to think about this typical uh, cognitive um, experiment that we do where we're interested in reward-related, decision-related processes. Of course, these are computer games, but they are quite boring. So I, I showed you this one with the um, thing with the, a maze in the very beginning, I think, uh, with Lilla. So this is like a computer game, but it's fairly boring because it's very controlled. Um, computer games, of course, it's not new to uh, that there are computer games and you, that you can have people uh, play in a scanner. The problem with computer games uh, thus far was um, that, of course, they are, you, you don't have access to the source code and you cannot do um, you cannot really monitor what's happening because you cannot access all these variables that um, go on. And by now, some uh, people have um, kind of used these very um, uh, 90s ego shooter things like Doom or so, and um, uh, have um, yeah, where the source code is available. And um, one can also, of course, make a little bit less violent games so that people don't go out here and be. Uh, uh, and you do school massacres or anything because they play the ego shooter here. That's where they all come from. It's all from the ego shooters. Um, that, um, but nevertheless, that we can do um, computer games um, 
that are a little bit more interesting, but we also have uh, full control over what's actually be, what's happening and what we uh, present. So this would be, I think, in the future uh, going um, uh, even further than event-related designs and having like these continuous designs where events happen on a... Um, I mean, the important events obviously don't happen on a millisecond uh, time scale, but at least the perceptual stream of what's happening is uh, continuously evolving and that sometimes something happens because you discover a treasure or something and then you decide to go on for a certain time and then you decide to go right. And this looks nice, so it feels like uh, playing a computer game and we have full control as experimenters. But that's the future. Good, so I'm done for what I wanted to do today. Um, so next time will be fMRI data pre-processing. Um, are there questions about experimental design? Good, so it's essentially these four terms or cognitive subtraction block designs, event related designs that you should know what they mean and be able to explain. And please do proper cognitive subtraction in your own work. Good, then uh, see you this afternoon at the, at the seminar.